All right, the recording is on. The hard drive somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll try. <laughs> an audience with the UN or something like that. That'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so nice to meet you all. Where Where are you all from? May, may I ask? I I'm from Australia. Australia. Yeah. We are from Ukraine, but we will leave in a few minutes. You're leaving in 10 minutes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Maybe join later. All right then, yes. Charlie. Uh, I, I am uh, from Colombia, Colombia. Uh, living in Estonia. Wow, okay. So, hey, Peter. Uh, Finn, is it Finn or? Hi, yeah, it's Finn. No video here, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm from Paris. Um, well, where are you at the moment? In, You're in, in Paris. Paris. <laughs> You're in Paris. Yeah. So, we've got origin and current location going on. Where, where, where are you, Peter? <laughs> I'm from Leicestershire in England, and I'm in Swansea in Wales. Right. Um, so there, you can, you can get the maps out and find out where Swansea is. <laughs> Um, is is ya Yakov? Uh, Yakov, can you hear us also, also? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, brilliant. And where are you from? I'm from Tanzania. Say that again. I am from Tanzania in East Africa. Tanzania. Yeah. Yes. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Wow! What what an what an amazing international. Call. I think this is probably the most international call I've ever been on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. You know, maybe you do it all the time, but uh, this is good. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I'm going to talk to you. Are you all, did you all mean to be on this call or is it just sort of uh, rolling on from the last one? No, I meant to be in this call. Okay, you're meant to be here. Uh, Finn yeah. and Charlie, is that, is that intentional or is this just rolling on? Uh, no, it's it, just really for me. I will be here for a moment, and uh, but it's really interesting to to hear you. Okay. All right. Well, as a few of you are going to be leaving soon, I will cut to the chase and and tell you what's what we think is potentially what it is most interesting about our project. Um, I've been in the space of trying to do what I can to solve the. I say solve, do my bit, do my small bit to, to help to solve the uh, democratic deficit that you might say, um, which is, uh, is, we see the remnants of Trump and Brexit and all this sort of thing. And, and when, when you ask people at the grassroots, why has this happened? Most people respond in terms of saying, well, we feel completely disconnected from politics and democracy at the grassroots. So the question is, how do we fix that massive problem? Um, and so I've been developing a suite of digital tools. So I know from the last call, obviously, um, there is a, a tension, shall we say, between authentic democracy and, and skills and the digital um, and the democracy. And can we uh, use the digital for, for social good and to bring people together to form relationships? So it's trying to solve these problems. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you so that you can see. Um, so I'm just going to give you a, a very quick headline. Um, let's start with, um, uh, can you all see my screen okay? Yes, I can see yeah. it. Okay. Yep. Okay. No problem. All right. all right, so what we've built, uh, we've built a few things, but one of the tools, one of the key challenges is how do you have a conversation with um, all the students all at the same time? Obviously in smaller schools that might be possible, and, um, but in, in the larger schools where you know, there's over 100 students or maybe 500 or 1500 and we work with colleges with 15,000 students. So how do you understand the priorities of a big community like that where they're always changing when there's new ideas and opinions and priorities? So we built a platform that enables all students to engage as and when they want to. Um, we kickstart that process with what we call a democracy day. And this is a primary school just starting that. They're all here, they're putting their ideas into laptops 
uh, for how to improve the school, how to improve the lunch menu, how to improve lessons, um, transport, all manner of issues. And then they take the lesson plan and they teach year six and year five and year four and basically engage the rest of the school. So the student council can take ownership of, of that. It's really simple. And by the end of that day, they end up with a list of priorities from the, the entire school that can help to inform their agenda. Because normally they sit in their student council meeting and they don't really know what the priorities of, of the wider student community are. So I'll skip out a whole load of detail in the middle, just in case a bunch of you got to go. Um, what, what ended up happening um, last May was that Cardiff Council, Cardiff is obviously the capital city of Wales, they just thought this was a great thing. Um, we showed them our pilots and our case studies and um, they, would, they commissioned us to roll this out to all the schools in Cardiff. So there's 116 schools in Cardiff. Uh, that's 116 primary and secondary schools, that is. Um, so we currently have this contract to roll out participatory democracy uh, to, to all the schools. This is just uh, an overview of the stats um, to give you an idea that there's 990 students in Cates School, of which a third of those students are engaging at the moment in the process. And they've suggested 100 ideas and 700 comments. So it's creating a big set of priorities. Um, these are the sorts of ideas that they're suggesting around lit littering and music and dropping prices of school meals and being involved in the new construction or the construction of the new buildings. So they rate ideas, they then debate those ideas for and against and neutral. Um, and then this all then feeds into the agenda for the student council and, and actions are all logged on the platform. Um, but the whole point is that um, because they can understand their priorities more quickly that they can come together around projects um, and there was one school here as an example which uh, prioritized going plastic free and then they basically adjusted the curriculum for the next three to four months so that they could look at plastic free and how they would do that they started to understand that they were using 25,000 milk bottles every year and that swansea so I think I'll just mute cut Charlie there. I think he's uh, having some breakfast. Or maybe um, uh, Marco, maybe you can do that. There we are. Um, so yeah, they, they realized that they were using 25,000 plastic bottles every year that weren't being recycled and across Swansea 5.2 million bottles. Um, so I encourage you to watch this little video if you have time, it's four minutes about their journey of going plastic free. Um, and through that process, they ended up writing to uh, all of their different assembly members, the different politicians, local politicians, national, regional politicians, and they lobbied for a policy change on the plastic bottles, which is being processed, uh, which they're making really good headway in. So I think there's uh, children have a lot of power to change policy and procurement uh, everywhere. And I think to see young people leading on this side of things, uh, you know, is a, is a really good way to see change. So we can see change. I think we've got an opportunity to run a new upgraded democratic process inside schools, especially inside democratic schools, perhaps being flagships for how we can do this more authentically. And then the actual procurements and policies that we see in our local authorities that are holding us back around renewable energy and food and waste and all of these different things, having these young people lead on those things and then having the adults and the parents and the politicians back up their campaigns, but having them largely student-led. So this is the sort of work that we're doing um, and what we've been trying to do is consolidate some of the best projects that exist. So for instance, um, we've been calling them PIPs, Proven Impact Projects. So these are projects that have already transformed schools all over the world. There are lots of case studies, i.e. going plastic free. Quite a few schools have already done that, but still 
millions haven't gone plastic free yet and they they've got a lot to learn from those that have um things like doing an energy audit inside the school to see how much energy the u is being used um how much waste there is and all this sort of thing obviously you can just get a consultant to come in and do this but it's far more constructive i think if the young people lead on these initiatives and then the consultants can come in and support them and probably one of the easiest and uh, highest with the highest sort of return uh, is to change the light bulbs you know if you if a school changed their light bulbs from fluorescent lighting to leds they make a cost saving of between 30 to 60 percent on their energy bills they're uh, saving co2 and what have you so what we're doing is essentially enabling these ideas of changing the light bulbs to be made available and discovered by all of the schools in the local authority so that's a, a, at the moment that's 116 schools in cardiff and the students watch the little videos they watch the case studies and they prioritize them and as they prioritize them um, then it becomes an agenda item on the student council and then one of the recommended actions is that they run these lesson plans that we've been trying to develop for them so i've been trying to do the hard work the legwork for them and then they might spend a couple of weeks with their teacher learning all about leds and doing the um, audits on the school uh you know in terms of how many light bulbs there are what's going to be the energy saving how much are they going to cost all the rest of it and then you might get the consultant in to actually do the piece of work and we've also been linking this up with the local university where students can come in um, from the university older students and help to actually enact those projects so the vision here is to take say let's just say we took five or ten amazing projects that have transformed schools things like growing food outside um, in in raised beds there are a certain number of schools that have done that but there are still tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of schools that aren't doing that yet and lots of schools have lots of land taking those types of ideas the energy ideas the food ideas the plastic free ideas the the ideas of monitoring carbon emissions and uh, volatile oxide compounds and all the all, all of these things that we need to do to progress to a sustainable world um, we can break them down into proven projects and they can be student-led um, and so from the students we can work out then to parents obviously there's a obvious link there and we've been developing a, a mobile app for parents because parents don't really use desktops um, uh, so that's uh, one thing we've been doing and obviously if you get critical mass of pupil and parents then um, you've got potentially a critical mass of residents one thing we've been doing is when you put your postcode in to the platform it automatically puts you into your geographic community um, so we're taking the geo data um, so as part of the process young people are discovering their geo political democratic boundaries and they're discovering who the geographic politicians are in their area and because they know how to use this new democratic process inside their school and they've taught their parents now they can start to do it on a geographic level and then they can invite their politicians into the school and give them a set of priorities for young people in that area which politicians you know rarely ever get and then keep in, keep a regular contact then with those politicians and say well this is what young people want in the local area uh, we'd like to see you obviously next month and you know maybe once every half term for an update on how you are progressing our priorities so that's essentially what we've been doing um i think that's probably enough to spark some questions um so i'll, I'll leave it there for a minute and see uh, if you've got any questions about that uh, whether i explained it well or not uh for for me just one one idea came came to me uh because cecilia was uh, explaining about the uh, one of the schools in australia which has uh, 1000 uh students yeah. if i understood correctly 
mm -hmm. and they are running it uh, democratically. Yeah. And I was wondering, it might be really interesting for you to connect with them and uh, see what kind of processes they are using and maybe introduce this to them because that might be also very, very useful for them. Yeah, who was that, sorry? With Celia, do you say? Yeah. Cecilia, Cecilia still here? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. How, how do you um, how do you chat ta tackle that problem, Cecilia, of having a conversation with with a thousand students? Well, I'm I'm not personally working with that school. I was yeah. telling the story about <clears throat> a change that's happening in education in Australia at yeah. the moment because of this particular school in the mainstream. Uh, which was run by a man called Peter Hutton um, and at Templestowe College. And it was a very run-down um, state school. And he was a, virtually given free reign because everybody thought it was just going to close down, really. There were you know, about just over 100 kids there. And over a period of nine or ten years, he changed the school so much that now everybody wants to go there. They've got more than a thousand kids. And he did it um, using a lot of the principles of democratic education, which is most unusual in a, in a mainstream school in Australia. Mm. Um, but he was allowed to get away with it because um, they, thought it was going to, they thought it was a failing school, basically. Uh, but is now... It, is it, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, now on. they're all looking at what he achieved there and saying, oh, this is what success is like because we've been doing so badly in all the international testing and all this sort of thing. Mm. And so they're, they're looking for new ideas. And um, so he's actually left the school now and he's set up a consultancy to try and help other schools go through this process of change. Mm. Um, so, and we're, we're kind of working with him a little bit um, we're, because we're hosting the Asia Pacific meeting in July in Sydney this year. Um, and he's going to be part of that if he can. Um, yeah, so he, even though Marco thought of, he, you know, to work with the kids at the school, I don't directly have contact with the person who is running that school now. But, but there is a yeah. new school opening in Sydney, which is going to be on very similar lines. Yeah. So, I think that there is an opportunity, certainly in failing schools, to set a new culture. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, it's funny, one of, our, one of our most recent contracts is with a, um, a, a school that's been just called into special measures, as they say. So they've had their budget taken off them and the, the budget's been transferred to the local authority for management. Um, but all of it, the first thing that they want to do is have a big conversation with pupils and staff and parents about how to solve the issues that, you know, that, that led them into this situation. So it's interesting that, you know, democracy actually, there's, a, there's an opportunity to set a whole new culture of democracy in, into schools that are failing. Um, but not yes. necessarily we need to go that way, but it's certainly one opportunity. I think, as you say, another opportunity is... Um, for democratic schools to, to really be a, a you know, leading light and a flagship of projects and ways that um, students can be learning their competencies through action learning. In Wales, we have something called the Donaldson curriculum, um, and they're desperately trying to implement an action orientated curriculum, um, but they really don't know how to, to do it. Uh, I think sort of um, moulding that around the well-being goals and the sustainable development goals and the actual projects that need to be implemented in our communities because you know you're probably familiar with the IPCC report of the International yeah. Pan Panel for Climate Change report saying we've got a decade or so to to make the critical changes but we need to enable a mass movement um, to decarbonize our society but also to tackle lots of other systemic issues being in health and all this and it makes sense to me that if that was student-led and school-led you'd have a fairly systematic approach 
to tackling those issues globally. And in a way, you can do it quite simply in saying, as I was saying before, you know, coming up with these the best possible projects. What are the best case studies for tackling bullying, for tackling mental health, for improving diet? You know, there's not necessarily hundreds of them. You know, you can boil it down yeah. to just a few. And a yeah. piece of work we've just been commissioned to do in, in Kenya is taking 10 of the best projects and having local communities, there's 1,450 wards there, and they want each of the wards, each of the local communities, to prioritise which of the 10 projects do they really want to get involved in and get excited about and actually commit to and put some work into. Um, so that's, an, and what they know, they've already got the NGOs, the organisations there, ready to support local communities to enact them. So what it means is that the NGOs won't be trying to convince communities to do solar projects or energy projects or food projects or health projects. You know, the communities get a chance to actually say what it is they want and then the yeah, NGOs yeah. can come in and support them, you know, and basically go where the energy is, as they say. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that's absolutely crucial, isn't it? That 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 it be from the from the people, and mm. it was something that struck me in India during IDEP recently. Mm. How many of uh, the projects that the children are actually running, you know, and coming up with um, in the, in their various communities and their smaller villages and stuff like that. Yeah, um, which we don't really hear about. That you know, they they really very articulate and very active in in getting things done at the local level and um you know that there, there was a lot of stuff about the children's parliament but there were also other projects that weren't just about the parliament you know um that were at specific schools um uh which i think would fit very much with what you're you're trying mm. to do here yeah um yes Jacko, so, do you? So somebody was trying to ask a question. Yeah, Jacko, is it? Yeah. Jacko, do you? Yes, I have a question. Yes, I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. I have liked the presentation, and the, I think the democratic education is something which we need to embrace. And the, my question is how. How does how is it done or con, concerning the, the, the tools and the equipment? Like for example, here in Tanzania, we really want to do it. We don't have enough teachers. We have many children around, women around, nowhere to go to, to school. And uh, I don't know, can it be done when you don't have things like maybe computer uh, technology? Or if, if there is another way, or now it is done. How is it done in Australia, Cecilia, as you are explaining? I would really like to have a, a more bit of it, how it is done, because it's something we need to do here also. We are trying to do it, but we face challenges. Thank you. Do, um, what technology do you have? Do you have mobile phones, um, smartphones? The, the technology. Yeah. Yeah, we, the computers. Computers. Do you, do you, do you have, because um, a lot of people that don't have laptop, like in Kenya where we're about to work, they don't have broadband, they don't have laptops or desktops, but they yes. do have uh, 4G and they do have smartphones, uh, which is quite surprising. And they think, there's about 50% coverage in Kenya at the moment of smartphones, and they think that's going to go up to 100% in the next four years, and potentially okay. with 5G. I mean, I don't know about the health benefits of 5G, but uh, that's another conversation. Um, uh, um, what? So, do you have smartphones, for instance? Can you use mobile apps? No, that's not available here. What do you do? normally we do is that we normally have what we call modem we connect with the internet and if you have like a laptop or a desktop which is not also very easy to get then at least children can come and then they they see they use that okay how many That's devices do you have 
No, I just don't. I have only one, but we use that one because around 40 children uses that because we love them. Yeah. And how yes. many children do you have? How many pupils? Okay, we I have uh, currently I have 40 pupils and yeah. the 35 women. But we normally give them in 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 in, in the past or in the sessions. We get time for the youth and then we get time for the children and then we get time for the women because we don't have enough materials. Yeah. I'm not sure this is 100% relevant to your situation. With, with 40 students, I mean, you can sit in a room and have a conversation with those people and identify priorities. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say that, you know, it's 100% relevant to your situation there. Uh, if you had... Okay. Uh, I mean, you, you you know you don't need, you don't everybody doesn't need a device. You can share devices, and in, in the schools yes. where I go to, um, yes. you know, and this is in you know the West in wealthy schools, they still only have maybe twenty or thirty devices, um, but those devices get booked out and they get shared around the different classes as and when needed. Um, so it's not like everybody has a device. There's only maybe sure. twenty devices or thirty devices in a a school of 500 students um, sure. so if you're saying you've only got 40 students I wouldn't suggest this is necessarily relevant but if you're trying to engage a much wider community uh, a much bigger audience then it then it could be relevant yeah okay. I, I wasn't quite clear about your question at the beginning were, were you asking about how you actually get started with democratic processes, is that? Yes, I'm Australian. Is you, do you mean how do you get started with this process that I've shown you? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. well I can, yeah. um, I, uh, uh, I can send you a little link. There's, um, we've got a little tutorial here. Okay, There's thank you. Ten, 10 steps to success. Okay. Yeah, and so, um, so anyone can just set up a group and follow through that and I'll support them in implementing that and engaging their stakeholders and making sure that it's not just a, a conversation that it turns to action. You know, the whole, the whole point in this process is to identify priorities so that people can galvanize around common interests and projects and form relationships with those projects and get real things done and, you know, take a sense of pride from that. And then, hopefully take on other priorities that are more challenging okay. uh, and learning in that process. So it's very much action learning. I think we had another question. Uh, yeah, who do we have? Uh, Finn. Hi. Yeah. Um, th thanks for your presentation. It's really inspiring to, to, to hear that like, um, it's it's like public primary schools that you're gonna unroll this whole thing in in Cardiff, yeah. Or? Um, well, we're actually working in primary schools, secondary schools, and colleges and universities. Okay. Um, so the, the this list um, that I was showing you earlier is the primaries and secondaries. Uh, this one here. Yeah. Uh, this example I showed you was actually the secondaries, and okay. we we engage them quite differently because. The secondary schools, they're all, they've all got mobile phones. Every, almost every single student has a mobile phone, a smartphone. Right. They're all logging into Office 365 and they all use their email address. So through the, smart, through the app on the smartphone, through a widget that integra integrates into Office 365, so there's a call to action when they log into Office 365 each time, and through their email, you've got three ways of being in their face, so to speak, so to speak. Uh -huh. um, and then you've got the student council that go around and teach the other classes face to face um, in, th in different lessons and tutorials. And we've also been integrating it into different competencies. In, in Wales, they have to teach a digital competency now alongside a numeracy and literacy competency. So there's a whole new framework for digital competence. Um, with primary schools, they don't use their email addresses. They don't log into an intranet. Um, 
so it's it's a slightly different dynamic there we tend they tend we tend to go in and do one off sessions in classes and then the two the teachers run classes as and when needed mm -hmm. okay so the the um, all right well the, the the two two questions i have is um uh, one is um like who actually goes through through all of the uh proposals and 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 yeah i mean are, are the proposals all student proposals are they the ones uh reading them and and discussing them and voting on them or is is someone else also kind of doing some uh synthesizing and like or dealing with all that humongous flow of information <laughs> uh the reason why i'm asking this is that actually uh right right now uh in france there's a there's a huge huge uh um kind of civilian uh, uh grassroots led uh initiative and and i think we're using the same system i recognize the kind of uh, uh interface and voting um really no stuff. you can't yeah. be I'm not aware well, of it. <laughs> it, it. It might like if if that's if that's the the vocalize um, interface maybe, but um, anyway, well, what I, you mean? I, I, there's a huge I'd be very surprised if they were. I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I maybe I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a so yeah there's a huge flow of, of information and basically yeah. I'm just wondering like how many people engage with all of that information and yeah how, how does that work that's my first question yeah so in terms of synthesizing it, it <clears throat> so th this is the the feedback loop which you'll probably be familiar with and we've tried to break it down into its into you know into more detailed components i mean sometimes it's just you said we did you know and it, the thing is when you all schools and colleges and many organizations have some sort of democratic process Demo, in inverted commas in that sort of adopted but when you actually look at the detail or the mechanics of what they're doing it's you know there's very little there usually um, a, a staff voice inside a university for instance consists of one survey a year you know it's, yeah. not, a, it's not a democratic process and many in many of the schools the student councils that get elected they feel like they're not doing anything they feel like they're just sitting there and not doing a lot um, and one of the big questions that comes up in almost any council meeting, whether it's in communities or tenants, is uh, well, there's 10 of us here. How are we going to engage the 1,000 or 10,000 people that, are the, that, that we represent? You know, it's right. a, a little challenge. Um, so uh, the, what I showed you was like how, creating the priorities. That's just like the first step of four or five steps to get around the feedback loop. You know, the next step is... Um, setting agendas on a regular basis from those priorities so most organizations don't get to that first step because they're not having a big conversation and they don't know what the priorities are um, so that's why they, we call it a sort of a hollow democracy a hollow representative democracy because there's just no data very few representatives are turning up to their meetings with data saying i know ex i know pretty much exactly what my stakeholders want or the people that i'm representing what they want so that's the next step and then in those meetings you're logging the meeting notes and creating the actions um so just having that is a step forward and the, you know, the student councils they're meeting fortnightly anyway um so that's really the, you know that is what we teach them is how to how to do that and go th go through this more systematic more authentic process so there's a lot more meat on the bone um in terms of uh, moderating content uh we teach this, those students to become moderators mm -hmm. um, and they they basically in schools all content is usually set pending before it goes live right uh, so they log in and um and they can essentially moderate those content uh, that, that content and because there's probably three or four or five of them in there it's, it's usually done really quickly you know? yeah so moderation isn't isn't usually an issue um uh yeah as I was saying, so that's so we train them on the different apps so 
if you look at this process here, for instance, so setting questions, what budgets have we got available? What are our priorities? Creating events and meeting agendas, taking meeting notes, forming working groups, logging actions, crowdsourcing projects. Um, all of those are steps around the feedback loop um, to be, but um, most organizations, you know, they fall down at one part or another in here. But essentially in the platform, each one of these colored widgets um, is a, is, is, is those, are those functions. So we, we've had a look at sort of topics. Topics is the beginning of the process. What are the questions that we're asking? How to improve health and well-being, or the environment or, you know, transport or whatever it is. And then you've got priorities that are being ideas and solutions that are being rated and debated underneath each of those topics. So that creates the priorities. We're looking at if you've got budgets available, they can put the budgets in and uh, start to engage in open, transparent budgeting and what you might call participatory budgeting, where these expenses are in line with the priorities that the students are creating yeah, or your stakeholders. So when it comes to this, this is something that the school spent or the school council spent or whoever spent that the evidence of need came from a priority in the, the first section, if you're with me. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of budgeting and then creating the events. Okay. So we're having, let's say a school council meeting. Um, so all of those events are put on the system and all the meeting agendas and notes are all taken open transparently. Again, this is another big issue. Like, uh, what we found is almost always there's a staff member that takes the meeting notes on a Word document and it gets logged on their hard drive and it never gets seen again till the next meeting. Yeah, yeah. And this is the core of democracy, right? That, yeah. How that school student council or the staff council or the parent council or the community council operate is really the hub of our democracy. Yeah. So if someone's logging the meeting notes on a Word document that doesn't get seen again, you know um yeah. and so how did the agenda get set the agenda gets set from the priorities in uh on the students yeah or from the stakeholders right, right. Uh, and then logging then we're looking at logging uh actions so actions can be uh logged on either directly on ideas so that all all the actions are to do in progress and complete um, and then they can be assigned to different people and with due dates and all the rest of it. Um, so keeping track of all of that. And the other thing is around pledging. So it's around crowd, crowdsourcing. Let's say, for instance, the students said that they wanted to do yoga classes or um, they wanted to do an away day or they wanted to build these veggie boxes outside. You might need volunteers to do that. So there's an element of being able to pledge in as a, uh, a volunteer mm -hmm. to, into those sections so you can crowdsource the different resources needed. So that's pledging. And the last one there is, is motion voting, which uh, we co-created with um, Glasgow College. Um, so that's uh, being able to vote on motions in AGMs or throughout the year. So that's more about changing the rules of the game, you know, changing policies and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I answered your question about capacity. Well, it's it essentially, no, well, you, you gave a, a, a lot more detailed answer, but, but it, essentially, if I understand correctly, the ones kind of processing all that information is uh, staff members and uh, a certain number of s trained students on the student council. Or... Yeah, the student groups, yeah. That's what yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Okay. But we try to build out that capacity through training the student council and usually the schools are really up for that. The right. staff, there's, yeah. there's usually, say, a staff member dedicated to the student council for half a day a week or something like that. Uh -huh. the, the staff inside, the staff resource inside the school is very minimal. Right. So, yeah. and they, so we go in and say, what we want to do is hand over a lot of that responsibility, if not all of it, to the student council and right. let's get them active. Let's get them learning some real life skills here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously digital is just one aspect of that. 
and all of this digital stuff leads to face-to-face -face projects you know right. where they're actually right. changing the locks on the toilet doors and they're yeah. you know they're building veggie boxes and they're changing light bulbs and all of this sort of stuff and they're going plastic free that's amazing um okay and so thanks a lot <laughs> yeah you're welcome my, my second question was um uh how did you convince cardiff <laughs> <laughs> well um they're doing this thing called a child-friendly city uh okay. so it's a unicef badge yeah yeah um have a look at this blog if you get a chance it's blog.vocalize.org okay and if you just scroll down the side here you'll see this one here launch a participatory democracy at grand council okay uh, we made a little video about it, but basically the UNICEF have these badges that councils pay lots of money to try to achieve. Right. Um, ch becoming a child-friendly city is one of those badges. Yeah. The question is, how are they going to actually genuinely become a child-friendly city? One of the things they've got to do is demonstrate they're having a big conversation with young people. Okay. Um, before we met them, they were going to do the standard survey monkey post-it notes, paper tablecloths, big sheets of paper, sticky dots, all of that stuff. Um, and we said, well, here's a couple of case studies. So we showed them the case studies that I've just shown you. Um, what we could do, we could do that in every, or attempt to do that in every school in Cardiff over three years. And they said, okay, we'll take a punt on that. <laughs> um, and so they gave us a contract last March. It's been going really well over the last six months and they've just extended it now for for the full three years and, and, and then upping the numbers to 138 schools to include a whole load of special schools. Um, also to include the EOTAS, they're called EOTAS community, which is education out of school. Okay. Um, started with them as well. Um, so that gives you an, an idea that yeah, Cardiff, the councils have a, you know, they all want to solve this problem. They just don't know how. So, um, and they're just not aware, you know, they just don't know what they don't know, so to speak. Uh, consultation, as you know, usually consists of a survey, um, which obviously is not a conversation. Right, right. So, you know, there's an opportunity for all of you here, both to, to, to potentially to integrate it into your, or to run it inside your own schools, or to be presenting it at your local authority level, um, mm. in your countries or at regional level to say well look this is what the capital city of wales are doing um perhaps we could do the similar thing yeah yeah um yeah well okay so uh, if, if i may ask just one last question um and just on that front i can if you if you do want to do that i can share with you the uh presentation i made to cardiff awesome yeah yeah um which just uh yeah and, and li literally you could i mean we could do another zoom if you like just to become more au fait with it right um yeah. and you could just go through take them through this presentation awesome or or you could arrange a zoom like this you know and just arrange a, a meeting with the decision makers so yeah. that might be head of the youth council or it might be the director of education or whatever and just uh, you know, see if we can get an, a, an hour's zoom with them go on Finn what was your next question well yeah is how how um like your presentation is 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 really inspiring and and um uh I'm wondering yeah how how open you are to sharing uh this resource how open source it is uh, or is it yeah are you are you selling it are you what what's the yeah, uh, to, to 100%, 100% all of those things, you know, we want to try to, um, obviously, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the dream would be that the all, the, 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 you know, there was a democratic evolution on the planet and that came through young people. Yeah. Um, and I think we all want that. Uh, we all want to see uh, obviously, you know, we're in the middle of a six mass extinction and people don't really know what to do about it and the governments yeah. aren't acting the way that we want them to act. Um, and what I've heard for the last 20 years, because I was in the sustainability movement, well, I still am, but that's where I started, 
what I heard from the leading speakers like Vanda Shiva and all of these, you know, yeah. gods and goddesses yeah. and, and gurus and what have you that are up on the big stage is that we have to solve this democratic problem if we want to solve the other issues, you know, right. the, 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 right. because mm-hmm. unless you've got people engaged at the grassroots, mm-hmm. you, you, you're very unlikely to solve regional problems or national problems or international problems. Do you know what That's I mean? You've got to get right down into that local decision making at community level, yeah. which might boil down even, you know, what makes up the community. Well, maybe it's the school, the church, the GP practice. You know, they, what are the big communities of interest that make up your geographic community? Right. So, um, so the real work to be done, and I'm not the first person to state this at all, is to democratize our groups, communities, and workplaces. Yeah. That's the actual work to be done. And what the inspiring thing about Cardiff for us was this time last year, we just had two, uh, was it, or maybe three schools, this operating in three schools. And then Cardiff said, okay, we'll roll it out to all schools. Right. You know, um, and by the end of this year, we're hoping that, you know, that Wales have said, right, we'll roll it out to all schools in Wales. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it can happen really quickly. But we've got to make that happen. I just don't think it's going to happen the other way. The government are not going to say, oh, hey, folks, we're going to run this new, all fangled, authentic democracy system now. And, you know, the adults, I don't think, are going to change their behaviour. They're, they're too steeped in bureaucracy and all the rest mm. of it. But there is an opportunity inside schools and with young people especially with mobile apps and all the rest of it you know these young students especially secondary school students they're so up to speed with the global issues and their digital natives they're really quick to pick this up and they're a lot of them are really confident (laughs) you know you give them an opportunity to to present to politicians and they're well up for it you know like greta thunberg which you have have you all seen greta thunberg yeah she's amazing Yeah. yeah so uh, we're all inspired by Greta if you haven't seen Greta yet please google Greta Thunberg and and it's just a taste and I come across students like this all the time who are they've been elected into their student councils you know you can imagine you get some really inspiring young people in student councils Mm. Um, so we need to create more opportunities for those young people to take more responsibility and and get them in front of the people and so we can we can show, uh, you know, we talk about this hollow representative democracy. We can fill that void with a data trail um, to, to begin with. So that data trail becomes young people inside a school, the students of a school saying these are our priorities, that feeding into the student council. The student, all the student councils together coming together and feeding in data into the youth council for the local authority and all the local authorities coming together and saying this is our data collectively to fill in fill into the welsh or or fill it fill into your youth parliament i mean i don't know what it's like in your other countries but um we've just started a, a welsh youth parliament in wales they've literally just got elected in november last year and so can you imagine being one of these elected representatives where in Cardiff, for instance, you've got two representatives representing 40,000 young people. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what, how on earth are they supposed to, uh, how are they, are they supposed to understand the priorities of young people in Cardiff? Mm. They're going to turn up to their meeting going, uh, <laughs> you know, priority is, but what we can do is actually, with this data trail, with all of this, we can actually say, Actually, the priorities from the 116 schools are mental health, bullying, food, plastics, CO2, and they'll have data to show that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously in different regions of your country, you're going to get different things. And then we can guide that conversation. So it's not just purely bottom up, but we can take what we call these PIPs, those proven impact projects, and we can seed those in so that every single school... In, in the country. I mean, I would like to see these pips being discovered by all schools everywhere. 
Yeah, and that to me is like the route map for how we solve all of these or begin, you know, on a really sort of systematic methodology, methodological, methodological, I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Um, uh, yeah, process on, you know, how do we uh, tackle these, these bigger issues. So yeah, it's all, um, there are uh, open source uh, code, there's open source code that you can get involved with if um, you want to build, uh, you know, to get, chip in on the mobile app. I was trying to build a, a new interface. We've got, we've got um, our mobile app was just released this month. I should say last month. Um, so you, you, can, you can go to uh, Android, uh, Google Play or Apple iStore Store and uh, search for vocalize so that was literally only come out a month ago so um have a, have a look at that and if you won't be a member of any groups so if you do register i suggest you search for this one demo group and join that and then you can play around it's only a very very cut down version of the of the web interface it's just the topics and ideas at this stage but as far as all the other resources, I mean, right now we've been commissioned to try to get an app, a white label app for Kenya by the end of the month. And we've got people in Kenya, uh, sorry, in Russia and Toronto who want to set up a, a social franchise and we're, you know, to try to get up and running there. Um, and we're trying to work out the details of that. Um, so the, the more people who are up for, that conversation and to try to work out the nitty gritty of that social franchise, the better. Right. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for your questions, Finn. That was, really, that was great. Um, who else? Uh, 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 just just a time time uh, notice. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Uh, two o'clock, and um, um, Jacob is uh, supposed to start his workshop in the room number one. Uh, but at the moment there's no one there. Okay. Uh, so I'm wondering if if we just continue until we finish this topic and then switch to the Jacobs. Yeah, Marco, why don't why don't you just say a couple of words about yourself and Constantine about and what your aspirations are here? Right. Uh, so, um, well, I've been I've been following this this uh, platform since we met with Peter. Uh, 2011, um, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's just uh, something that shows so much potential in, in 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 engaging young people in in many kinds of level, uh, not just young people, but anybody. Uh, and I, I I really see see the see how it could be used in, in the community level and schools and so on uh, at, at the moment I'm eager to try it out in the UDEC community uh, I would like to see this part of the governance of UDEC in, in the future and hopefully we will be experimenting with it soon uh, about Konstantin he's an entrepreneur uh, in Russia and uh, he was he was uh, thinking about uh, building something something with this platform in Russia. Um, I, I don't know the details how the things are going, but I think there's there's ton, tons of potential there also. Hmm. Yeah. So Finn or anyone else here, really, this is uh, it's all work in progress. It's all very agile. As it, this is just where we've got to. So if anyone wants to co-create this and obviously all in different countries so you'd be pioneering it in your own country and modeling it and adapting it to your own country and um, you know we, we'd just be collaborating to make that happen that, that's, that's really it's, it's as simple as that yeah 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 some fantastic things there Peter yeah, yeah. just that you we have got, you know, we have made some good progress and we've got some great case studies now and obviously having the capital city of a country um, yeah. get behind the idea of democratising all their schools um, and that will lead to democratising the parent groups as well because 
parent voice is a big issue. Very few schools have got a good conversation with parents going on. Um, and that was a, a contract that we got last year from something called PTA UK. And PTA UK, obviously, they've got two thirds of all PTA parent teachers associations signed up to them. But they did a rebrand to something called Parent Kind because they wanted to be a more authentic um, com, um, voice of parents. And they realized that PTAs are not that. PTAs <laughs> are something else. Um, you know, they raise a little bit of money for the school by selling cupcakes and stuff. Um, but so one of the things, um, so next week, for instance, yeah, we're, roll we're rolling out the mobile app to parents at a primary school but it's the young children that will be training the parents on how to use it. Um, again, if you get a chance, there's a little video just here, parent voice launch at Burryport Community Primary School. And, and what you'll see there is the young primary school students teaching the parents. Um, in that video, they're teaching them the platform and because the mobile app is out now, they'll be teaching them the mobile app when we go in on Tuesday. Um, so again, all, we try to keep everything student-led, you know. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, um, you know, like I say, if anyone uh, is inspired, <laughs> sure. let's, uh, let's join the party. <laughs> let's, let's dance. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm 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 lucky to be to be part of uh, UDEC Council as well, and the, and the French uh, uh, oh. chapters council, and uh, so yeah, if if we can get it working inside of UDEC and maybe inside of UDEC France, uh, French you chapters is reasonably active. So um, hey. maybe there are people inside uh, hey. UDEC France chapter that'll um, yeah be able to. Uh, act upon this and like connect to the right people and so on and so forth. So mm. like to see that. The beauty of it is that it's just one conversation, you know, with the right person, right, um, a, a right decision maker, whether that's at a school level, whether that's at a local authority level, or whether that's at a national level. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you could say international. I don't know, but you, if you talk to the director of education at the local authority, if you get that meeting. And they go, this is great. I like this. Yeah. I mean, in, in Uruguay, two years ago, the director of education made a decision to, to give every child um, in school tab a tablet, a device. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so they've gone from being completely disconnected to being totally connected. And what if, you know, one of the next decisions that they make is that we want them to all be involved in decision making and, and action. Yeah that's how quickly things could change but yeah. someone who understands the possibility has got to push for that meeting and and make people aware of what's possible right yeah yeah, yeah. brilliant so should we give voice to Jacob? yep yeah yeah thank you peter Thank you very Thanks. much, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, yeah. Um, I'll put my, have you got my email address? Uh, or you can, I'll put it in the chat here if anybody wants to email me, peter.a vocalize.org. And you've got the web addresses there, blog. Dot, um, have a look at some of those videos. Uh, if you want any presentations or anything like that on my info, just let me know. Um, this 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 ten steps thing here. I'll put some links in here, shall I? Ten steps for schools. Um, I'll just put the blog in there. Yeah, yeah. There's, you know, there's a ton of stuff. Um, I'll stop the re recording here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, thank you.